Hello, my name is Doug Morse. I am the author of a Morse blog, which is a blog I've been running for a number of years, mostly for my own personal um, interests, uh, having to do with photography and film photography in particular. It often serves sometimes as lab notes or um, other notes to record experiments and experiences, but also to share what I've learned about film photography with other people. One of the recent things I've done is to look at doing film development tests for black and white large format film. I've chosen Ilford FP4 Plus uh, as one that's economical and gives very good um, grain resolution uh, as a film. I originally wanted to do something that was more proper around the zone system, and I had seen some YouTube videos from Tim Layton, who does some wonderful black and white large format work, and he suggested that a subscription to one of his workshops would be a great way to understand how to properly calibrate the, zone, the film speed uh, within, the, um, within the, the zone system. But not wanting to spend the money and to use send away film for his um, densitometer use, I went to look around the web and I discovered this website called Negfix um, 8. And it's a blog that someone runs and he has a subject called using a scanner as a densitometer. And he goes through and des describes um, how to use a scanner, which I've always suspected you could use as a densitometer to make measurements. And one of the things that uh, he suggests doing is to use um, a piece of software called ImageJ that's referenced inside of his blog site. And when you use a linear raw scan with 48 bits, you can actually use this to get um, proper densitometer readings. Now, the issue I have is my Photoshop is Photoshop Elements, and it doesn't allow me to do um, histograms with 48-bit values, only 8-bit values, and that's just not enough and sufficient to do this. Now, I think normal Photoshop, you certainly get access to 48-bit histograms, so ImageJ may not be required, but I'm uh, fairly parsimonious with respect to the, um, the money I spend in my photography, and so I'm not really into spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars or pounds on Photoshop. So... I looked to, um, to doing this this way. This is a nice resource for this. Um, so you click on the ImageJ link on the Negfix website. Um, it takes you down to a download page. And from here, I download the, um, the ImageJ bundled with 64-bit Java for Windows because that's what I'm running under right now. Uh, ImageJ is an open source piece of software um, that someone's developed. And so I download this here, and you can see it downloading. And then once it's downloaded, then I can extract it into a folder, which I've already done. And then from within this folder, um, I merely have to invoke ImageJ. And it's a pretty stripped down piece of software. There's not a lot of help for it, but we don't have to do too much with it either. Um, here, I'll pin it to the taskbar to make sure it's around. And the first thing you want to do is you want to open the scan of the, um, the negative that's been created. So I'll find that um, here on my hard drive. And I have a file with a blog entry. And I have a number of scans that I've done for my blog article. And I'll just pick one here at random. I'm not sure which ones of these correspond. So here you can see this is a scan of the different zones that I have. And then I'll go to histogram under the analyze plugin. And the first thing you'll notice is you'll get a histogram for the entire image. And this isn't what we want, is we want something that'll be what you select. So the key thing is to use the live button I've discovered. So you, once you click on live, then anything you select within the image will generate a histogram. So you can see, for instance, if I go down here to this darkest section and I select out a zone here, you can see what the histogram for this is. And we're looking for the mean, which is you know around eight or 900 um, counts, basically, um, out of 65,535, which is the maximum for 16-bit value. And you want to adjust the, the window to fit, obviously, within the, the range of the zone that you've um, you've exposed on the film piece for my blog entry. So we'll move it up here in, the, in this instance to the top. 
and we'll get a value of, of around yeah, 60,802. And that's the film base. Um, and what I've done is I've constructed a table, which I'm showing here, of the different values. And you'll see down at the bottom, there's a film base value here. Um, and that's about the same value as I have there. And that corresponds to that number, the mean for that. And then the next one up is zone 0 and all the way up to zone 10. And so now, if I take and make subsequent measurements for each of the different zones, for instance, if I take this and I move it down here, this will be my zone 0 measurement. And you'll see that I get a different number. It's about 34,000. It's almost half, which is what you expect. You expect to be half, um, twice as much density um, as before, so or or half as much brightness. And so we just make sure that this is getting a good generous amount um, to average out any variations in development or exposure that you might have in the image. And then we move to the next one. This will be zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, etc. as we move down to zone five, six. So we do move down through all the zones, basically. And we type these numbers or write them down into uh, the spreadsheet um, as shown here until we get to zone 10, which is the darkest zone, which is around 800 counts. And then what we do is refer to the um, the, the um, NegFix website. And NegFix gives us a basic set of calculations. That's the log base 10 values. So here we'll see this is the log base 10 values that we saw from uh, from the NegFix um, 8 website. So the density is equal to log 10 of the um, intensity before it leaves the film to the intensity after it leaves the film. And this is what we use to, what I use to calculate the density, basically. And I use the film base value for the I0, I0 um, value. And you'll see that in the formula here. So I'll double click on it and you can see that the, the film base number is the numerator and the zone zero is the denominator for the zone zero density. And that calculates out to 0.2. And I do the same thing going up and you can see that I then pick up the value from the zone one um, density measurement histogram and that becomes the, de um, the denominator. <clears throat> and then up into zone two, of course, it's the same story. Um, once again, I take the zone two histogram measurement and I keep moving up the table and I calculate zones for each and every one of these, basically. So these are the zone, my zone densities now. And then I compare these against what you read about um, in the literature about what one expects for different zones. So for instance, um, if we look at zone five, zone five is supposed to be about 0.7 um, is the value. And then zone eight is about 1.3. And they're, they're pretty close here. So this is the, num the, the kind of the development that I've settled on um, for, for my particular film and the meter I use, which is a Pentax um, analog spot meter. So now I've got a system that, that works. And you'll see I've got a family of curves that I went through with a number of experiments. The gray one here is the one I finally settled on. Um, but you'll see, here, and that's for the ASA 80. So I expose it at ASA 80, even though it's a 125 film. Here's my first experiment, which is I exposed it at 125, did normal development, and then at ASA 100, I did minus 20%, and then I decided to, um, to improve the density a little bit um, at the low end here um, by moving the exposure down to ASA 80. And I think that gives me pretty good results. So that's a summary of uh, the, the techniques that I go through in order to uh, take density measurements for my zone system. There may be some confusion when thinking about the film base. If you look at many references to the zone system, then the densitometer reading that you're supposed to take for the film base, you're supposed to subtract off the densitometer readings for the other film uh, density readings. What I've done is take the ratio from the film base and what, of course, this allows me to do is to um, essentially subtract out the film base from the other ones um, because of the nature of logarithms.